that works out. Recording, there we go. All right, so go ahead um, and get that going. And then in two more minutes, we will officially start. So right now, welcome. For those who are joining us, we're up to 28 people. Make sure that you do mute your microphone, otherwise we'll hear everything going on in your house. Um, there's two polls going on. There's the fast poll that I'd like you to do. It's all in the chat. And then you'll also see um, the Kahoot code that y'all are logging into, as well as a link to the docs um, that you could use if you don't wanna take notes by hand. One little caveat, um, not many of you knew I had to leave suddenly on Wednesday and I left my drawing pen at home. So I will do the best I can to write today, um, but I might have to head over to school so tomorrow I can actually write so you can read it more legibly on the computer. Um, but that's it, so please do the poll. And then let's see, I'll pull up the poll results right now as you guys are logging in. So we can see where we are. My polls. Okay. Eric, can you hear me? I can hear you. Um, so hopefully Kozar too. Kozar, your camera's on, just a heads up. Okay. All right. So this is, um, oh wait, Sayers, you can hear me? Yes, I, I hear you just fine. Okay, all right, perfect. Um, Kalia, honey, check to make sure your computer's not muted. Okay, wait a minute, Dr. Earring. Yes, ma'am. This is Ms. Coastal. All right, do I need to like turn off my camera and just, and then mute again or what? Um, you should, <laughs> underneath <laughs> you, there should be a button. <laughs> I can mute you. But on your face, there should be a button that you can turn off your camera. Okay, bye. Thanks for doing this. You're welcome. <laughs> You're totally welcome. All right, guys, um, real quick, welcome. It's officially 10.05. I am recording this live. This is the first time that I'm recording it through the Google Meet app. So we'll see how that goes. That would be fantastic. Um, that way I can just focus on teaching your help yesterday was awesome. Um, I just did another fast poll like we did yesterday just to see like what we remember and if we were here. So um, based on our current data, five of you say you remember pretty much what we did yesterday. Five of you are saying, eh, two of you weren't here. Thankfully, people who were here, no one had a one, but that's fine because the who today is gonna build on what we did yesterday just to make sure that you have it. Um, if you are still signing in, that's great. The Kahoot code is there, but I do also want to real quick look at the AKS that we're talking about. So we're still in probability. We're going to be specifically looking at the idea of unions versus intersections from there. And then um, you were going to end with a quiz is. So let's get started with the Kahoot first to see how much that you remember. So nine questions. Are you ready? Um, protocol is, you can put your mic on and talk when you need to, you can type when you need to, I'll be monitoring both chat and that. Okay, so the shading is including the elements that describe what. So remember that we talked about union versus intersection. So again, this is gonna show me how much I need to talk about stuff today based on what you remember from yesterday. So what is it talking about? Excellent. When we talked yesterday, we talked about union with the letter U. And we talked about like two people getting married and it's like all the stuff from one person's house mixing with all the stuff of another house. So if A and B got married, all their junk's coming together. So that's what union is. And it even looks like the letter U, okay? Next, let's take a look at another Kahoot. Let's see who's in our lead. Jaden, nice job. Skylar, very, very good. What does that mean? This I didn't tell you, but I want to see. What do you think it means when you see a zero with a line through it? What's that probably mean? I didn't teach you. I want to see what you think it could mean. You probably should hopefully know this from algebra. Okay, so you just so you know, I sometimes skip quick so we can get in that habit. Fantastic. There are no elements in the set. So if there's nothing that could make that true, it's going to be a zero with a line through it. It just is called empty set. Okay. Remember, an element is the type of solutions that could come out. Oh, I went too fast to see who was in the lead. It looks like there was a jumble up. All right. The relationship between sets A and B. Again, I did not teach this to you, but I want you to use your, use your noggin. So what do you think is probably happening when A is inside all of B? Let 
Let's see. Pretty close. Yep. It's a subset. So if we have our entire circle is B, types of food, A could be chocolate because chocolate is a type of food. Um, toilet paper would not be in B because toilet paper is not food, if you didn't know that. So that is kind of where that comes from. Okay, let's see who our shakeup is. Ooh, Sayers taking over. Y'all better watch out. True or false? Both whales and fish breathe air. So look at the circles. Whales are in red. Fish are in blue. True or false? Both whales and fish breathe air. Let's see. Okay, I think I'm going to move on when we get to like 25 responses. If we look at the circle, we can see that whales is in the red circle. Because whales is in the red circle, we know anything in the red circle relates to the whales. So if they have hair, they have a live birth, they breathe air, they live in water, they have fins, and they can swim. Notice how in the middle, where the red and blue circles kind of make the little ovaly thing, that's what the whales and fish have in common. So just like when you're in ELA and you're doing like character maps and comparing characters, that's the same idea here. So because breathe air is not in the overlap, it's not in the intersection, it's exclusively relating to whales. So that's why it's false because it's not with the fish. Woo though, Jaden overcoming the administrator. You're kidding, next. Who has neither Facebook or Twitter? That should technically be nor if you're an ELA. So who doesn't have either of it? No Facebook, no Twitter. Okay. So this is a good one leading into what I'm going to talk to you about today. This is about the universal set. So if we look here, that green box represents everybody that could fit in. So because Harry isn't in either circle, but he's in the green box, he's considered in the universal set. So for that reason, Harry doesn't have Facebook, nor does he have Twitter, but he's still in the group because he's in the larger box. Whoa. Ooh, damn man, Sayers back in the lead. Skylar, you gotta work it. Who has Facebook or Twitter? So I'll be happy if they have Facebook, and I'll be happy if they have Twitter. Okay, when we do or, that's going to relate to the union. So that means either one can satisfy it. So let's talk about this before we move on. If a person has, thank you for doing that. If a person has Facebook, it satisfies the condition. It's true. If a person has Twitter, it satisfies the condition. It's true. So when you see or, either one is possible. In this case, we have eight, eight people all together. So if I was saying, what's the probability a person has Facebook or Twitter, I'm going to count all the names in the Facebook circle, all the names in the Twitter circle, Twitter, Twitter circle, add them up and divide it by eight. So in this case, it would be seven out of eight. Kind of it's like if you think of Christmas time and you tell your parents like, I want an Xbox or I want 200 bucks. Like you're happy if you get an Xbox, you're happy if you get 200 bucks. If you said to your parents, now please don't be greedy, but if you said to your parents, I want an Xbox box and I want $200, that would be intersection. If you only get the Xbox, you're like, dude, I asked for $200 too. Like what happened? Be nice. But my point is, or you're happy with either one. If either one is true, if one of the two is true, it's good. And is you got to get both in order to be happy. And that's the intersection. That's what we're going to divide, delve into more today. All right. There's got to be a big shakeup on this one. Oh, Anthony taken over. Well done, Ant. This is going to be exciting. I know it's not going to be exciting, but I want to, don't get overwhelmed. I'm giving you two minutes to do it. So before you kind of go crazy, First, we need to see what's true with the parentheses. So that upside down U, remember, is the intersection. So you're looking at what does B and C have in common? And I just realized I didn't open up my Epic pen. So let me get that. Then once you know what B and C have in common, you want that or anything that's in the A circle. So let's take a look. What B and C have in common is here's B, here's C. 
So what they have in common is yellow, these numbers here. That's what they have in common. So we care about those numbers plus anything that's in A. So anything that, because it has to be B and C in common, that's why it's 1, 3, 9, 14, and 15. So that satisfies the B intersection C. But because it says or, we're also content with anything else that happens. So we're going to, good, most of y'all got that, fantastic. Okay, so we'll move on because that's the focus of this lesson. This was just for me to pre-see what you guys feel confident with already. Anthony, still killing it in the lead. All right, next. This is all and. So it has to be in A, and it has to be in B, and it has to be in C. You know, this is tough, but you all are going to kill it by the end of this lesson. So you'll be fine. Okay, so which of those numbers are in A and B and C? And I am, there it is. There's my comments. Okay, oh, you got kicked out. We're back in it. So which is in A and B and C? And I'm going to move on when it says 80 seconds. You got about 10 more seconds to decide. What is in circle A plus circle B plus circle C? Because it's got the upside down. Three seconds, three seconds, and then I'm going to hit skip. Okay, good. Almost all of us got it right. Because it's got to be in A, it's got to be in this part, and it's got to be in B, so it's got to be in this part, and it's got to be in C, so it's got to be in this part. The only numbers that satisfy all three conditions are 1, 3, and 9. Okay, again, do the parentheses first. So this is saying A and C or B. So anything in C or B will satisfy the end, but it's also got to be an A. So I'm going to slowly go through this. People who want to go fast can. In order for it to be in C or B, because it says or, I'm going to use the same color for each of it. So if it's in this yellow circle, I'm happy. And because it says or, if it's in this yellow circle, I'm also happy because it could be anywhere in circle B and it can be anywhere in circle C. I'm gonna switch colors to pink because it also has to be an A. It must, must, must be an A. So when I circle A here, because it's also gotta be an A, that means that these are the only numbers it can be. One, two, three, four, six, and nine. Remember, first I did the parentheses, after I did the parentheses, then I was like, okay, anything that's in yellow will help me. But because it also says and, I got to make sure it's in the pink no matter what. All right, I'm going to move on when it hits 50. Awesome. Okay, let's see where our standings are. Oh, we're done. Perfect. Eight out of nine, Krishna Turner. Congratulations. Also eight out of nine, Skylar. Nice job. And doom, do, do, do. <gasps> Y'all got crushed by Sayers. I mean, he's the part, he's the admin over department. So glad he beat you. Just saying. All right. That's what we're doing. We're going to focus more on sets. Okay. So let's leave this kahoot and go right into the presentation. So again, I did put the link up here. If you want to scroll, um, I'll put it one more time. If you have access to a printer, probably, I think it's pages eight and nine, you might want to have printed out, but we are also, I'll take time for you to write it by hand. So let's talk about again what we're doing. Welcome, welcome. We've got 40 people here today. We're talking about probability in terms of geometry and the AKS that we're focusing on is AKS number one. This is a continuation of what we talked about yesterday. So we're going to talk about, yesterday we talked about decks of cards and basic probability. So today we're still going to be talking about that, but we're going to talk about it in the context of and or or. If you haven't participated before, um, I do monitor the chat box. I also welcome you to turn on your mic and talk. Um, I guess I just saying, but participate as much as you feel comfortable doing. Okay, here we go. So first and foremost, let's talk about union. So this is kind of laying the foundation of what you can expect for this. As you just saw in the Kahoot, when we see union, we're talking about the letter U. And that U represents either or, or, 
um, I mean, it pretty much represents or. So you could see it say A or B if you see the yellow square. So it can be A or B or A, U, B. So basically when we look at this picture, and I don't wanna blow it up because if I blow it up, I lose my face and y'all know how much I love my facial expressions. So when I look here, A is in blue and B is in pink. So when we're talking about union, I want to taught you to think about marriage. It's like everybody's stuff goes together in one house. That's why I've got that cray cray house with teddy bears and cribs and bicycle. It's like overwhelming. There's so much stuff because it's the union. And as you can see, union, just to give you a help. See, remember I told you I left my pen at home. So it's going to be a little funkity dunkity with my writing. Um, so union, it's liter literally already in there. So we've got our union. So all you got to do is look for the letter U. And when you see the letter U, you know it means everybody's stuff. Okay. Next, we have trash text page. Um, next, you're going to go to the intersection. And when we talk intersection, I want you to think of college dorm rooms because y'all hopefully or you're headed to college, you might have a roommate someday. That's when we talk about the intersection. College dorm rooms are the shared space. So if we look at this set here, let me make this bigger so you can see the image first and then I'll bring it back down again. So if we look at this image, get away, there we go. Okay, we've got blue represents A. The magenta represents B. The intersection is what both A and B have in common. It's the overlap. So if we're talking about the common area and we talk about college dorm rooms, okay? When I was in college, I would be annoyed when I first met my roommate. Afterwards, my roommate and I became close friends. But if I came in and I saw my roommate taking a nap on my bed, I would be upset because it's my bed. But if I saw the roommate in our common carpeted area, it wouldn't be a big deal because why? It's shared space. So here we've got one roommate. Here's her stuff over here. Here's her desk. Here's the other roommate. Her stuff is on the other side with her desk. And then this carpet right here is our shared space. That would be the intersection. It's what do they have in common? All right. So moving on, let's take a look at the slide. Okay, this is all I did is I took a street that I found on good old Google. This is in Philadelphia to talk again about the union versus intersection. So if I'm talking about these two streets, if I was saying what cars are the union of those two streets, then because it's union, it would be what? Go in your chat box, put it in. What cars am I going to be talking about if I say union? Okay, well, if I have, let me help you out a little bit. Here is, let's say my pink box, okay? So this represents one set here. And this represents my other set. So if I say the union of cars, what colors should I focus on if I want the union of all the cars in the two sets? Okay, so I'm talking about all of the cars that are in pink and all the cars that are in blue would be the union because union is everything. When I'm talking intersection, I would only be talking about the street intersection and where the two groups overlap. So let's take a look um, at another example to be more specific. I don't want to jump there. I don't want to jump there. Let's look at here. Maybe we need to like look, look at examples. Okay. Right now, take a piece of paper and draw the two circles down. All I need you to do is draw two circles. Because if you don't do this, it's going to be super, super uber stressful. So just do one circle and then another circle, and I'm gonna switch and I wanna see your all pictures. So I'm gonna go back to my other screen and I would love for you to please put your camera on and hold up your paper. That way I know I can move on. So I need to see two circles with a box 
on a piece of paper and I need to see at least five people hold it up before I'm going to move on. Awesome. Oh, there we go. All the cars. How come it wasn't updating on my screen? Awesome. So you are present. Yay. Okay. So basically, I still want people to put it up. So I'm waiting for people to hold up the cameras. We're good. Okay, what we're gonna do is once you have your circles, we have to start placing the letters. So when we place the letters, you're going to first start and see all the letters that they have in common. So here for the U, the U stands for the entire box. Then we have our A set and we have our B set. And I just lost my comments again. There we go. Okay, so when I start writing, let me get a pen that can actually work. I'm going to look here and I say, okay, here's the letter A. The letter A is in my union. Now I have to see where else do I see a lowercase a? Well, there's no lowercase a in set A, but there is a lowercase a in set B. So I'm going to just write the letter A right here. Then I'm like, all right, dude, I did this one. I did this one. Let's look at my next letter. B. Here's B. Well, I have a B in the union. There's no B in set A. There's no B in set B. So I know my B's got to be chilling out here like Harry was in the Kahoot. Then I got to look at, okay, here's C. Well, I have a C in A and I have a C in set B. So C has to be in the overlap. Then I've got D. I've got a D in set A. I've got a D in set B. So I know that D has to be in the overlap. So really, I've already written everything that B is going to have. Now I've got the letter E. I have the letter E in set A. It's not in set B. So I'm going to have my E right here. Okay. Does anyone need me to repeat what I just did? It's so weird yeah. that y'all are so quiet because normally you talk. Please okay. repeat it. All right. Let's do it one more time. First, I look at the union set. Here's the letter A. I see that the letter A is not here, but it is only in the B. So I'm going to write my lowercase a in just the only B part. So then I'm going to say, okay, here's the letter B. Do I see a letter B here? No. Do I see a letter B here? No. So the B is going to go in the box, but not in the circles. Then I look at the letter C. Well, I see the letter C is here in set A. The letter C is also in set B, so it's got to be in the intersection. It's got to be in the overlap. Then I see I have D. Well, I have a D in set A. I have a D in set B, so I know it's got to go in the overlap. Then I see the letter E is in my union, so it's got to be somewhere in the box. I see that it is in A, but it's not in B, so it's going to be all by itself right here okay now we're going to look at it now yesterday i didn't do it in the kahoot but we talked about how a with an apostrophe meant not an a so right now in the chat box please tell me what you think the answers are to number one what letters are not in a and i should get my answer key mm -hmm. So which letters are not in A? Ooh, what did I just do? Undo. Okay, it is actually A and B. So let's look here. If I circle letter A, whoa, that's huge. When I put a circle around this right here, what letters are not in the circle? That's all it's asking. 
the two letters that are not in the circle is letter A, which is in set B, but also the letter B that's just chilling out in the box. So the answer here is going to be A and B. That was like really crazy. Okay, let's go down. Next one. What would you get for number two? B complement. What letters are not in the B circle? Excellent. B and E, not in the circle, so it's complement. All right, let's look at the next one. A, U, B. A, U, B. It's like A and B got married. What letters are involved? A or B. Nope. Oh, there we go. Anthony's bringing oh, it up. Because it says or, it talks about anything in A is good. And anything in B is also good. Remember, the U is kind of like, I know, it's going to be mind-blowing. It's like the letter O. So it's or. It's also like union. So it's all the letters. So everything except the letter B. All right. Um, next, let's look at what is not in A or B. Not in A or not in B. This is super tricky. It's super tricky. Nope, nope, nope. So this one is easier to write to do without looking at the picture because sometimes kids get uber confused with the picture. Okay. So what we're going to do is first, let's see what letters are not in A. So when I see that A is C, D, and E, I know that A, lowercase a, and lowercase b are not in A. Are we good so far? Then when I say, okay, what letters are not in capital B? Well, A is in it. B is not in it. C is in it. D is in it. E is not in it. So I'm happy because that says or, if I got any of these letters, I would be happy. So A, B, and E is the correct answer. Okay? It's tricky. Sometimes when you look at the picture, it's easier. Sometimes when you look at the picture, it's more confusing. And that's why we have to write it out. Okay, let's do um, two more and then I'm going to make it harder. Let's jump down to eight. What would you get for eight? Could you explain how you get that? How I get eight or how I got four? Four. Yep, let's finish eight and then I'll go back and do four. Okay, so far, no one has gotten eight correct. Okay, so let's look at this. First, let's try not to, we can look at the picture. We know that it has to be, I'm going to do it instead using the highlighting tool. So in order for it to be an A, it can be either letter E, letter C, or letter D. So that's all the things that are in A. But see how it's the upside down one? That's like the intersection. That's like what cars are in the middle. So now I want to know what cars or what letters in this case are not in circle B. So letter B is not in circle B and letter E is not in circle B. So the only one that got colored two times was the letter E. So E is the correct answer. It's not letter B because B is not an A. And it's not C and D because it has B with the line in it. Let's go back real quick to um, number four. So for number four, why did I do that? For number four, 
we're looking at, we want everything that's not in letter A. So I'm going to go back to my highlight tool and I'm going to say, okay, anything that's not an A, I'm going to color yellow. So this is not an A and this is not an A because here is circle A. So I want everything not in the circle. Then I say, or anything that's in, not in letter B. So this is not in letter B and because here's circle B. So I want anything that's not in it. And this is not in it. So because this says or, and now you're all going to get my messy handwriting, I'm sorry. Because this says or, I want everything that's highlighted. Because it's the same thing. It's like I want an Xbox or $200. You get the Xbox, you're happy. You get the $200, you're happy. In this case, if you get a color, any letter that's got coloring on it, you're happy. So if you get a yellow A, happy. Why? Because it's not in the subset A. If you get the letter E, happy. Why? Because it's not in the subset of B. So that's why it's A, B, and E. Because in this case, because it says or, it's everything that gets colored. When we were looking at number eight, when it was and, then it had to be what matched over. Okay, I'm going to move on and we're going to go something really hard until we can do the quiz. This is our, I think our yeah, last I'm slide. Sure. You good? Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Now we're going to make it more complicated. Yay. So please on your paper, three circles crossing over going on just like this. And um, I'm going to slowly go through how to put the numbers in. And this is one I had to do last night to make sure I didn't screw it up today with you. So first things first, let's look at the number one. Here's the number one. So what letters in the chat box? Go ahead and tell me which circles need to have a number one in it. You. A, C. So we're looking at A, B, or C. Yep, A and C both need the number one. So when we're talking about colors here, let's do our highlighting. Here's my A. Oh, little messy A. Here's my B. And here's my C. So because the number one, as you guys have said, is in one or is in A and C, I'm only going to put it in this piece of the overlap because it can't go in the blue. Because if it goes in the middle, then it would also have to be in B. So we've done the number one. Now let's look at the number two. What sets is what subsets is the number two in? Yep, A and B. So now I have to see, okay, A is yellow, B is blue, it can't be in the pink. So I'm going to put the number two right in here. So now we've done the number two. Okay, what about the number three? Number three goes in A and B. So I'm going to do my best to sneak it in here. Excellent. Now we've done the number three from the universal set. We've put in it A and we've put it in B. What about the number four? Number four goes only in B. So we're going to have it out here all by itself. Excellent. What about the number five? Whoops. Excellent. Number five goes in C all by itself. What about the number six? Excellent. Six is going to still be inside the box because it's still in the letter U, but it's just not going to be in any circles. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to actually erase this because sometimes for me, it's easier to look at the letters than it is to look at the picture. So first of all, it says, what letters are in A, and remember upside down, so this is or, the union, this is and. And when I think of this, this is what I do for and. I know it's I'm such a dork, but it's the letter A. 
So this is like an O for or, and this is like an A for and. Isn't your mind just blown? I know. Amos, I know you're so overwhelmed right now. Okay. A and C. So it's like the shared space. So what letters fall in circle A and circle C? Or numbers. Who's got it? Excellent. One. One is it. So if we look here, my A numbers are, because it says or, I can have this one or these two. And, I'm sorry, it says and, not or. And it's got to be here. So because it's got to be and, it's got to be hit twice. So the only number that's hit twice is the number one. Okay. What about, let's look, go down to here. 23. A or C. Which numbers would satisfy both A or C? Five and one. Five and one, five and one. All right, let's take a look. Because it says or, anything in A is good. Also, anything in B, or sugar shoot C, is good. So I'm going to highlight. Here's A. So that's, I got two is in the yellow circle. Three is in the yellow circle. So those are my A's. And also right here, one, two, three. Or C. So C is this one. And it's also that one again. So because it says or, it's everything. So it's one, it's two, it's three, and it's five. All of those satisfy the condition. So here, wow. Here we have one, two, three, and five. Here we only have one. And you're supposed to put set notation. I'm just not going to write it. So it's going to be one, two, three, or five because it says or. It can be all of it. All right. Let's go back and look at number 22. So what would you get for 22? on one second okay um four three two one nothing okay this says and okay so when we do this one pen please we are looking for what do they have in common so in this set if it's in b it could be four two or three if it's in C, it can be one and five. Is there anything I circled more than once? No. So nothing is actually correct. Way to go, Anthony. This is an empty set because there's nothing in the center box. In order for it to be B and C, it would have to be in this area. And because there's no numbers in the overlap, it's going to be an empty set. All right, try 24. Look at what's different when we say or instead of and. And I just got rid of the number one and three, so let me throw those back in there. Okay, B or C, one, two, three, four, five. That's correct. All of them except for six are in B or C. Okay. Um, let's do, I'm going to give you a challenge problem. Yay. We love challenge problems. Um, and then we're ending about three minutes and well, then I'll give you the assignment in three minutes. Okay. This one, start off by seeing what's in B and A to get your first one. So what do B and A have in common? And then add on the extra for C. So it's got to be in both B and A or anything in C. All 
Okay. Okay, where are we at? Two, one, three, four, I five. I got something wrong. very different. What did I get? I did not get four. Let's see. I think you put the three and the one in the wrong place. Ooh, you're right. I did. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't, it wouldn't in this case necessarily change anything, but it's definitely not four. Because it's got to be in um, B and C. So in which case, it's got to be here. And or it can also be anywhere in here. So you're looking at two, three, and four for those numbers. Okay. So what I need you to do real quick is I am putting in, we're going to stop here. I know you're still a little bit confused. We're going to do the harder ones through the quizzes. And that's going to give me the data I need for us to move forward. Um. I'm going to, in the chat box, I'm sorry, Amos, in the chat box, I need you to do one more poll just so I can see um, what you feel like you know, and then um, we're going to do a quiz. So if you're my kiddaroos, you can do participate in the quizzes, but first, please do the poll because I need to see like what you know, what do I still need to cover? So basically, it's a five, four, three, two, one, like I normally do. Um, and I just want to see like what you know and where I need to keep going from there because that's going to help me direct tomorrow's instruction. Are we ready to move on some or do I need to like, eh, doc, I kind of have no idea what you're talking about, which is what some of you are saying already right now. Let's be realistic, but it's okay. It's brand new and I'm not in front of you and we're doing it through technology. So that's totally fine. So all I need you to do is give me your five, four, three, two, one on how well you feel with this, because that's going to help me direct tomorrow. Um, message. There we go. Okay, need more help. That's fine. We're going to work through more questions tomorrow. Also, this is where we are right now. For those of you who've done the poll, it looks like um, no one's got it. Totally fine. I'm going to hope the quizzes is going to help you get it. So if you're my kid, you're not you don't have to turn anything in. Um, into e class today, I will check that you went there. But I do your assignment is the quizzes. So that's going to also help me. So I've got one person who's lost totally fine. Four of you almost got it. Four of you kind of know some and the bulk of us are in the middle and it's brand new. So I'm totally totally fine with that. Um, all right, go ahead. And if you want to stay on you can, if you want to jump off um, and do the quizzes on your own, you can. Uh, that code, let's see, I don't know if that's the live code or not. So let me just double check real quick. My quizzes. I had set it to play live, but I don't know if. All right, so we'll do this. You can either, um, if you're my student, you can, I know, I must, I must have had the old code. So don't worry about that. So we'll do this instead. So if you are my kid, you do need to participate in the quiz. You have two options. One is to sign up doing um, through the assignment. The other one is you're welcome to sign up doing this. Um, if you are not my student and you want to get credit for participating in it live, please go ahead and put your teacher's name in also. So you would be like Eric hyphen and then your name or peace hyphen in your name. Otherwise, you can participate like this um, in about four minutes. Hacker, hacker, hacker. How can I give you credit for that? Come on. Um, right now it's 1047. So what I'll do is in about two minutes is when we'll go ahead and get um, started. So that way we all are. There we go. Can see the rankings and how we're doing. Um, but it's brand new. And it, again, it's just going to help me see what else we need to do tomorrow. I think we'll probably, based on most of you being at threes, I think we'll probably review this one more time and go on to the tables because um, that would be like the next logical choice.
um, let's see, I'll give about 35 more seconds and then I'll hit start and we'll go from there. I was going to hit groups, but I guess with teams, everybody has to be in and you can't have anyone joining late. So that's why I didn't want to do teams. All right, let's hit start and see how we do. Play by play. Ooh, Mr. Doe's kids taking over. Yes, Anthony, way to go. It's okay. I'm using this for data. Don't stress out. It is purely data. I'm going to only show the top five so we don't get stressed out. And actually, now that I'm thinking, because this is being recorded, let's take out names. Oh, true. I can blur it later. Kyla, Anthony, there's a shakeup going on. And again, this is just data. Don't stress out. Do not stress out. Do not give up. If you're my kid and you want to do it again, you can definitely do it again because you have a separate code that'll come up for you also when you log in. It's all right, just your best brand new topic. <laughs> Sanaya, don't stress me out. Sanaya wrote, why am I getting these correct? I'm just guessing. Because you learned it. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that. Ah. Let's see how we're doing for the questions. I will stay on and review the questions just so it's recorded. It's all right, Chloe, I got you. It is okay. Let's try to just finish above 50%. It's a brand new topic today. Ooh, shake up, shake up. Do your best. It's okay. Noemi, taking up, moving up. Mm, that's a lot of good sounds. Awesome.
Okay, if you do want to stay on, I will go over each of them. So you're welcome to stay on and watch, um, or you can watch later. But I just want to make sure we're clear. You only got three wrong. Fantastic. One wrong. You keep getting the same question wrong. It might be a wrong question. So we'll look at that because I know Mr. Doe and I found an error last night that I missed. Eighty-one, two wrong. We'll take it. Fantastic. Congratulations. Yay! You guys learned stuff today. Love it. I love it. Noemi, I think from now on, you can just stay at home even when we go back to school and you can learn digitally because that's freaking amazing. Great job. And we're up to 60%. Love it. Love it. Love it. There's still some people finishing, so I don't want to end the game yet. Can you guys hear the music? I had typed the question, but I didn't see an answer. Ooh, Addison taking over. No, you can't hear the music? Darn it. Okay. I feel like it's putting me to sleep right now like a lovely little lullaby. 61%. Awesome. Our target was 50% correct. So I'm very pleased with the 61%. 17 of 27 done. So keep going. Right now it's 1055. I want to respect your time. So let's try to get this. I mean, this is technically geometry and strategies. Um, but I'm going to start going over the questions in about two minutes. So please stay on if you can. Um, but if not, I totally understand. And again, you participating in this for my students counts as your work for today. It, the quizzes is a grade. Yes, for my students, this is a grade in the grade book. So every day I'm going to do a grade in the grade book. Um, yesterday it was submitting the candy probability piece of paper to assignments. And then to not overwhelm you today, the grade is this. So there's two options for people who have participated in it live. I'll pull your data from here to put it in a grade. Now I'm going to do it kind of like, I don't want to say completely based on participation. Um, so like, it's not like everyone's going to get a hundred, um, but it's just for me to see what you know. So pretty much I'll just do a scaffolded. And then, um, but kids who did not participate live, there's a separate code for them or when they log into the quizzes, it comes up for them. So they'll be doing it that way. All right, I'm not going to hit end quiz, but I do want to start talking about the questions. So that way we can just kind of move on. I'm not going to start by accuracy. Um, this one is the one that is and. So remember that it looks like the word and. Okay, so the first one, the upside down is and. It's also the intersection because that's where the two streets meet. Okay, um, moving on down, this next one is the or. Remember, it looks like the word or. It also kind of looks like the word, which it is, union. So U-N-I-O-N. So this is or union. Okay, next, AMS, you still got jokes. I don't know what to do. Here it says, let A be one, two, one, three, and four. B is any even number less than nine. So here I'm going to just start and write what are the even numbers less than nine. So we've got two, four, six, and eight are all even numbers less than nine. It also says for letter A that it says or, so it's everything. So A is one, three, and four. So my answers are going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 8. So it's going to be this one. Um, next, let um, A be 2, 5, 7, 10. X is any even whole number. So again, we're going to do it down as, let's do the 2, 4, 6, and 8. That's any even number. Um, A is 2, 5, 7, and 10. And because this says 
an upside down, we know that's and. So it's got to be in both. So the only one that's in both is the number two. All right, moving on. Here we've got letter C um, is two, five, seven, and 10. B is any number less than the whole number thing again. Because this is U, that's the union. It also looks like the word or, so it's all of them. It's two, four, five, six, seven, eight, and 10. So it's this bottom one. Um, C says C or B. So we've got C and anything underneath it. Oh, any odd number, sugar shoots. I got lost on that one. Odd number, one, three, five, and seven, and nine. So because it says or, it's all of them. So it's one, two, three, five, seven, nine, and 10. Okay, moving on. Number seven, it says it wants and. So I'm looking at first an odd whole number. So we've got one, three, five, seven, and nine. And we also have two, five, seven, and 10. So the only ones that are in both are five and seven. Which of the following statements are? Um, Anthony, I have no idea what we're doing about the probability test. So I, I'm i gonna say, I don't know. I was gonna say it could be the EOC and I'm gonna say, I don't know for that. So we'll figure it out as we go. I might end up doing something in E-class. There's something called quizzes, a similar to this, a quiz that we can do where I can create a unique question for each student and I might have it be there. I don't want you guys to stress. Right now our focus is let's master the content. Um, the following statements are true for this Venn diagram because they have, there's no overlap. Um, A and B, there's nothing that they have in common. So it'll be the empty set. Uh, last questions. Uh, what's A and B? What do they have in common? Well, they both have one. Wow. They both have one. They both have two. They both have three. They both have five. And that's it. So one, two, three, and five. Here it says the number of people who participated in weight training and cardio, they had to do both. So it's 15. Let's see. And then let's go here. Last set is first it wants A or B. So it can be any of these numbers here. And it's got to be in B or C. So because this says and, it's got to be what's the overlap. So the overlap would be one, two, three, five, seven, and nine. All right, lovies, that is it for today. Thank you for participating. It took an hour. I appreciate you doing it. This does satisfy. Oh, no, wait. Okay. Yes, ma'am. What can we go over? Or yes, whomever. What do, would you like to cover? Um, don't, as far as I know, I don't know if Mr. Sayers is still on here. Um, as far as I know, we are not doing interims right now. Um, we, I have not gotten an email about it for other days. The schedule, the email that I got from Mr. Sayers on Monday or Sunday night, let me pull it up. Man, I got too many emails. It says we'll be running a normal bell schedule next week. So it looks like you are going to have work every day. So the email I got from Mr. Sayer says staff will be running a normal virtual bell schedule next week. And then on Monday, students should see digital learning opportunities in all seven of their classes. So it is, yes, work every day. Hopefully your teachers are not overwhelming you. We should only be giving you, I got to turn off this quizzes. It's like driving me insane. And I'm looking at the wrong camera. So um, yes, you are going to be having seven classes every day. 
um, in theory, our assignment should be 20 to 30 minutes each class, and they should not be as rigorous. Like it's stuff that you should be able to do independently at home because I've already trained you guys um, in terms of using online. And I got, it was funny today. I had a little joke with Miss McMahon. I don't want to get in trouble, but they said, Gwinnett County has officially approved Google Meet. And I was like, I sent an email to her. I'm like, what dupes, we've been doing it Google Meet since September and I didn't know it wasn't approved. So it was like, oh, well. So because you guys are already used to doing this, um, that's what I prefer to do. And since I see all of you for two hours a day, I see you a half an hour for, ge I mean, I see you an hour for geometry and an hour for strategies. I kind of like just looped everything together into one bundle. So for me, if you can log in at 10, that satisfies geometry and strategies um, by MS. So that's where we are. In terms of interims, it's a secure test. So I can't imagine that they're going to have you do it at home. Um, someone asked me about the milestones. There was something that was posted um, that said that for now, the milestones are even on hold and there's going to be a meeting about what they're going to do from there. So right now I would say don't stress about interims because there's no way you can take it at home. And there's a small possibility that they might even um, transition from the milestones. So right now we're just going to take it like one staff and there. And yes, I, I, the comment about there's more work than regular class. Um, my godson is here and I can't believe how much work he had to do for elementary school yesterday. It was insane. Um, but it is 11 o'clock. So please, I'm going to end a call. Please go outside to get your free lunch. I know it's peanut butter and jelly. I'm sorry. Chicken wings are a lot harder to move than peanut butter and jelly. Cause y'all are like, I mean, it's always a conversation. Do we smell chicken wings today during fourth period or not on Wednesdays? I think it's chicken wing day. So looks like it might still be peanut butter and jelly, but go ahead, get your free lunch. And I will see you guys here tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Thank you for participating and have a good day. Bye guys. And do this, do this, awesome.